Hi, it's Dr. Brent Baldessar again, and uh, I'm here to answer a question I get, I get quite a bit. So the question was, is I've, I've been to the emergency room, my doctor has already seen me, I was in a car accident, I'm getting neck pain, what more is it uh, that you can do as a chiropractor or you can do as a biomechanical expert to see what the injuries are or why am I still having pain or get me off of these anti-inflammatories and, and pain medications? It's a pretty simple test, but basically what we want to look for, we want to do what's called a stress series. And a stress series basically reproduces the accident again. So we're taking your head and your neck in a very slow fashion through the accident again. And what we're looking for is areas of trauma. So if you look to the screen here, what you're going to see here is that the actual x-ray will put you forward and the x-ray is going to put you back. And what we're looking for are gaps within the joint space. Now, the cervical spine is made up of seven bones with facet joints. And each one of these joints are symmetrically spaced between each other. When you go through these stress views like this, what we're looking for are the gaps which indicate areas of sprain. Now, sprain is pretty easy to diagnose, but not a whole lot of people are specifically trained on how to treat these injuries when it comes to the neck, the low back, or the mid back. This is what we specialize in. So we find one of these tests positive on you with a stress view, then we know you have a sprain, and we usually correlate with findings with edema or swelling, which indicates that it's a newer injury. Um, so if there's been a big trauma, like a car accident or a fall, then that, that's how we usually say they're attributed to these accidents. So this is the identification process. The next step we do is identify the, the injury, and then we put you through a treatment plan to fix these injuries and then reassess you. The treatment is actually relatively easy. Once we identify where the sprains are, through usually a course of between four, six to eight weeks, depending on how bad the sprain is, through a series of chiropractic adjustments, massages, some physical therapy and rehab, we usually can get almost a 90 to 100% improvement in these areas. Now, there are cases where some of these sprain strain injuries do have some level of permanency, but it doesn't usually affect your function overall. So kind of clear that confusion up a little bit. Just like a rubber band, if you stretch it past its normal range and you snap it back, no matter how much you treat that rubber band, some of those ligaments may, or some of those rubber bands may still be a little bit loose and lax. That's one of the things that we want to test for, and that's why we want to get these injuries checked out earlier. The earlier you get these types of injuries treated and, and diagnosed, the better off your prognosis is in the future. So don't skip over that. You've been in a car accident. You've had some kind of a big fall. Just give us a call, or, or we'll help you find a doctor in your area who's trained in this, this, this type of, of biomechanical technique. And basically what we want to do is do a quick assessment, see if you're suffering from one of these injuries, and if you are, get you fixed. If not, then try to find a specialist who can help you. All right, now one of the questions a lot of patients always want to know, or anytime I'm speaking or teaching, they want to know is what's some of the most peculiar injuries that you've seen? Well, as chiropractors, we see a lot of soft tissue injuries. It's not like the ER where people come in with, you know, impaled by something, nothing like that. But what I want to share with you is a couple of the videos that we've seen or some of the motion x-rays or some of the x-rays that we've seen come in uh, with people who really didn't think they had that big of a problem. And they were almost hesitant to even come in and get checked. One of the injuries that we see a lot, and it's called a capsular tear. tear. A capsular tear is actually very difficult to diagnose. What basically happens is that the shoulder harness, the shoulder belt, holds the shoulder back, and as you're hit, your head turns to the side and it gets whipped back and it tears a capsular ligament. Now, a capsular ligament is difficult to diagnose because you can still have normal range of motion, but only maybe one or two things actually trigger the, the, the pain from this capsular tear. So, on the video here, what you're actually going to see, the arrow is going to point to actually where the capsule tears, and you'll be able to see this gap, this wide open gap. So if you've been in a car accident and you still feel like you have a pretty normal range of motion, but there's certain areas, especially down to the neck, the pain can sometimes radiate down to the arm, or sometimes you feel fine, and then two or three days later, up to a week later, you start to feel that stiffness really sit in. A lot of times that's either a sprain strain or one of these capsule tears. So that's one of the most unusual ones that we see. Another one that we see I'm going to share with you is that we, we've had patients come in in car accidents as little as seven miles an hour. Now, seven miles an hour does not sound like a traumatic injury. Seven miles an hour, though, from a body moving at seven miles an hour to a dead stop is very traumatic, especially for the whipping motion that takes place up in the neck. So I want you to take a look at these, this video here, uh, this video extra here, and what you can see is how unstable this top bone is. Now, this is, not a, this is not something that we treat in my office. This is immediate referral to an orthopedic office. But God forbid if this patient just never went and got checked, who knows what could have happened. Uh, she could have sneezed the wrong way. Uh, God knows it, it could have been devastating, but we were able to get her to, uh, to the right doctor and, and get her fixed. Now, sometimes people come and say, hey, I was in a car accident, but the car just bounced off me. There was very little damage to my car, so I'm probably okay. There's a mechanism called an elastic collision versus an inelastic collision. 
Now an elastic collision is a term used in physics, which means that let's say you have two milk jugs and they're halfway filled up with water. If I take them and smash them together, you can see how violently the water is gonna explode in these milk jugs. But if I show you the milk jugs afterwards, they'll be perfectly fine. There won't be a single dent in them. That's called an elastic collision. They actually bounce off each other, but all this energy is transferred throughout the, throughout the milk jug. The same thing happens in cars. The way cars are made today, they're actually made to have little damage to the car and they bounce off each other. And all that energy is transferred to the drivers and the passengers and that causes problems like soft tissue injuries and sprains or herniated discs. So don't let just a little bit of damage to the car make you feel like you shouldn't be checked. Matter of fact, that's more, more often than not is the best time to be checked is when those cars are bouncing off each other. Now an elastic collision is, let's say I take those same two milk jugs, I pour the water out and I smash them into each other. It's gonna just crumple all these, these milk jugs up. And a lot of times you'll see people walk away from a car accident, like you'll see the race car drivers walk away from a car accident and the car is just mangled and there's nothing wrong with them. Well, that's an elastic, uh, that, that's an inelastic collision, which means that all the energy got absorbed through the car and very little went through the driver. So that's just to clear things up a little bit about don't gauge always how much damage is to the car with how much damage is to you because basically you want to run these tests to see if there's any damage with you and then take it from there. All right, so that's the difference between an elastic versus an elastic collision. So now you know more than almost most professionals out there about how car accidents work. So what I want you to take from this is if you've been in an accident or you know somebody's been in an accident, make sure they get checked for this. Now you can either call my office or we can help you find someone who's close to you. Just go to the website on the bottom of the screen. We'll see what we do to help you. If you have any questions, feel free to email or give us a call.